fellas, we gotta get Phil off the ground. adjust and we'll do a little demonstration on how this thing operates let's see what we got basically what we have here is a bypass valve with a vibration dampener or a pulsation dampener connected to it this is basically an air tank and what happens is is every time a pressure surge takes place in the tank the fluid level rises then when the pressure level drops the accumulated air pressure in the tank pushes the fluid back down making up for that gap in the fluid shot. So instead of them pulsations, you get a steadier fluid flow. And the way this thing works is it essentially takes oil from the discharge, passes it to this T fitting that has what I call the flow rate valve connected to it. It also travels up this direction to the bypass valve. If you have this valve closed all the way, all the pressure from the discharge will go out the flow rate valve, granted that it's open. If you do that with this closed, the pressure washer will shut down at 1600 PSI's. You don't want to let that happen because this gauge is not set for that kind of pressure. You would damage the gauge. We're going with very low pressures here. So essentially what we do is we back this valve off allowing some of that excess flow to travel in a loop right back into the intake. You can see I've just opened the valve and it's now allowing fluid to travel into the system. Okay guys, as usual I like to do a quick preliminary test off camera. And because something always goes wrong when you first turn on the switch to anything. First thing I noticed was my tank was full of water. So we got all the water out of the system. Then I noticed the router speed controller wouldn't work. And I'm chalking it all up to this bad boy right here. So Aaron, we're gonna have to chop this off, fellas. I'm gonna send you with a cord end. It is affecting the chopping effect of the triac circuit. It's not really a pulse width modulator, but it's similar to that. So I'm racing the clock here. We got a blizzard on the way and I got a million things to do. Now we got speed control. Okay, and this valve right here is your purge valve. Um, occasionally, at the end of the day or at the end of an operation, you're going to want to open this valve and let all the oil drain out of the system. What that'll do is let this oil column drain out and it will let the system fill back up with air because oil does dissolve air and over time, even though this thing is 100% leak proof, that air column will dissolve into the fluid and disappear on us. Because when we raise this hose up in the air, the pressure will get a little bit higher than what we're seeing. It could last for a long time, but you never know. So on occasion, that's what this valve is for, is to drain the system. So remember this here's our flow valve. We'll go over it one more time. It will kind of barely be open at times. And we'll try and set up a high pressure inside of here and just bleed the pressure out of that line. To set the pressure, we use this valve. If it's all the way off, all the pressure and all the flow travels out of the system. If it's all the way open, we're at zero pressure. The, the, the oil is just in a loop. It's going from the discharge right back into the intake. Okay, you can see here, I have adjusted this valve to where just a little bit of pressure is developing here. The more I close it, the more that will go up. Because once we get 
there's going to be some scenarios where you need some back pressure in order for this oil to be pumped high up in the air. So now inside of this cavity, we have a pressure. Here, I can bring it up to 50. Kind of wants to run away on you. We're at 50 PSI's right there. Let's see what that flow rate looks like. That's pretty high. So we, we would want to reduce that flow just a little bit for the burner. Well, see what I mean by dancing the valve? So that's at about 50 PSI there. That's the discharge valve. And you can see that has reduced it just a little bit. We can reduce it even more. And it's gonna be at 50 some PSI. So we're good. I'm gonna just let it climb right there and see what it does. Well, we kinda gotta back that back to 50 now. Anytime you make an adjustment there, you have to bring your pressure back by touching this valve. So when we adjust this one, it makes the pressure go up. To get the flow rate to, to change, we have to bring the pressure back down to where it was by adjusting that or else the higher pressure will just make it spray out faster. Look at that. That's barely coming out of there. And we're at about 40 PSI, fellas. So there you go, Phil, Aaron. This demonstrates how we are able to produce the exact pressure and exact flow rate that we want without any pulsation involved using a three piston positive displacement pump. Now you could buy the same type of pump made specifically for oil and they would um, through marketing purpose alone throw a thousand dollars on the price of that pump and it would basically be the same thing. It's basically a hydrostatic pump which runs you about 1500 bucks they're certainly better, but um, this is, uh, you're looking at $100 after tax versus $350 for a 100% duty cycle oil pump. So let's uh, clean this mess up. I got a plasma table getting delivered today. We're going to take this out in the blizzard now and hook it up to an oil burner and demonstrate its ability to actually get a burner to run up in the air. All right, fellas, I can't stress enough the need to pull the filters out of this thing. There's two filters in here. There's a screen filter in the end of this black thing. It's a dome-shaped filter. And there's also a plastic insert filter that's usually inserted inside the neck of these things when you take this part off also. So take this entire black... When you get the pressure washer, this part won't be on there. And you'll see inside the spud a little filter this thing right here we're going to want to get that out of there waste oil has a fibrous hairy like material in it i don't know what it is i think it may be from the filters and engines i'm not sure but nonetheless what i have learned over the years is that waste oil must be pre-filtered or gravity filtered and the systems you're using it on cannot have any filters on it or you will clog up in a matter of hours in a matter of hours so to make this thing 100% duty cycle and to be, you know, industrial, we have to remove all the filters. And, and that's one of the good things about the waste oil burner nozzles that I have is that they allow up to three millimeter particles to pass through the nozzles. Unless you're running on a very low setting, then the valve aperture is too small for that. Okay, fellas, let's go for a little walk here. You see, we got the burner lit up in the air, right in the middle of a blizzard, but hey, I don't have time to jack around here, man. I'm rushing, not nationally, I'm just in a hurry, and it happens to be winter. But anyway, 
You can see the pump can give us the oil we need. I'm having problems with my air compressor right now, fellas. I'm in the middle of a blizzard and I don't have a desiccant canister hooked up at the moment. I thought I'd try it without one, but things are still a little froze up on us. Um, this thing can do a lot better than what we're going to see in the video. I just don't have time to dial this thing in, Phil. I've got to get to the post office at a reasonable hour to get this thing to you in the morning. So we're just going to be seeing a quick proof of concept here to show that the pump does in fact get the oil up high as we're ever going to need it. We can get this thing up to 50, 100 PSI's, it don't matter. Um, I don't want to get this thing glowing red hot. I'm afraid we'll crack it. This is silicon carbide and that's similar to porcelain. So if it gets really wet when it's really hot, it will crack. So we're also going to want to build like a rain shroud around the top of these things. Okay, fellas, this is why I say we got to take the screens out of everything. See all that gunk in that small amount of time? It's a hairy like substance. Remember what I said? See those fibers? This is an all waste oil, guys. I think it comes off the filters. I'm not sure. Now the pump can eat this stuff and so can the nozzle, but a screen just can't handle it. That stopped us dead in our tracks halfway through the test. So I left that screen in there knowing this was gonna happen just to show you guys so you would listen to me. So there you go, fellas. I'm calling it a day. It's like nine o'clock at night. I'm gonna finish up tomorrow. I'm gonna get this video posted tonight, but tomorrow, I'm gonna do a demonstration for you guys on exactly how to light this kind of burner. I'm gonna do a bench test and show this burner set up on a bench with the absence of a blizzard in play. And we're gonna run this thing on a six horsepower or five horsepower air compressor. I believe it's a five horsepower. It may be 6.5. It's a gas compressor and we'll talk about air and a little bit and stuff like that. And we'll see what we got going on and how to light this thing.